Welcome back everyone to this week's technical video. These videos which I try to put out on a Tuesday tend to be a short, sweet, snappy, specific summary of a particular topic within farm animal veterinary medicine. In contrast, the week in vlogs are a little bit longer, a little bit less information dense and probably more of a laugh. Massive thanks to everyone who's been watching the channel recently. It's starting to gain a bit of momentum, which is really encouraging for me. It really encourages me to make more videos, keep stuff coming out. And that's really all down to you. If you're new to the channel, go and take a peek at some of the previous videos. If you like what you see and what you hear, like the video, leave me a comment and feel free to hit the subscribe button ring the little bell next to it. That way you don't miss any new videos. So it's currently October, 2021. And in the UK, really, we're just going into the autumn and then obviously into the winter. A major parasite of sheep and cattle in the UK is liver fluke or fasciola hepatica. That's just me making use of the Latin lessons Thanks for paying the school fees, mum and dad. Given its significance and its relatively complex lifestyle, liver fluke is a massive topic. Vets dedicate a huge amount of research and conference time every year to this parasite alone. For that reason, we're not going to try and cover it in one video, two videos, 10 videos. What we're going to do in this one is cover a very specific point and actually relates to a specific tool we can use to combat liver fluke. And that is the liver fluke antibody test. Historically, liver fluke diagnostics have been quite limited. Commonly, you had to wait for the effects of the fluke to occur. So that includes bottle jaw, which is a swelling under the chin of the animal. It also includes poor condition, poor fertility, and so on. Likewise, for farmers who send lambs directly to slaughter, there's often condemned livers on the kill sheets, and that's because of the damage the liver fluke does to the liver, rendering it unfit for human consumption. Consequently, there are reductions in the carcass revenue for the farmer. The only specific anti-mortem test has been fluke egg detection, which examines fecal samples from sheep and cattle to try and find liver fluke eggs. Difficulty with that is that it requires adult liver fluke to be present within the animal. Cattle and sheep don't eat adult liver fluke, they eat immature liver fluke and it takes between 10 and 12 weeks typically for that immature larvae of the liver fluke after ingestion, after being eaten, to progress to an adult and start to lay those eggs. Therefore, there's a 10 to 12 week period where that animal is infected with liver fluke, the immature liver fluke are likely to be causing damage. In fact, immature liver fluke may often cause more severe damage than the adults. During this time, the animal will test negative on the traditional test, and that's because there are no adult liver fluke to produce eggs, which can then be detected in the feces. To summarize, immature liver fluke are not detectable on the traditional liver fluke egg detection tests, leaving a large window where infected animals will yield a negative test result. We call that a false negative. This is one reason why on many farms in the UK, treatment with a fluke killing product, we call those a flucicide, is used routinely. That really does vary farm to farm. Commonly, it would involve for sheep a pre-tupping dose, plus or minus a dose in the midwinter. Beef cattle are often treated some weeks post housing. I'm not saying this isn't a sensible policy on some farms. As ever, your vet is the best person to decide with you whether it is. Nonetheless, frequent and routine treatment of liver fluke, especially with a triclobendazole product, triclobendazole is our most important flucoside, has led in many cases to resistance. Triclobendazole resistance really is a serious issue. I would guess underdiagnosed, and it certainly isn't limited to certain parts of the country. We can use newer tests like the fluke antibody test to try and use the medicines responsibly and where appropriate. That not only reduces the risk of resistance, it saves time, it saves money, it saves hassle and effort. Thankfully, the range of diagnostic tests for liver fluke has extended in recent years. There is another fecal test which can detect liver fluke at an earlier stage, that's called the Copro antigen test. Perhaps we will cover that in another technical. And there is a blood test where we take blood from a representative sample of animals and we look for antibodies to the liver fluke. Antibodies are protective proteins that the body makes 
after having met an infection and antibodies are specific to a given infection. So an antibody to liver fluke will be distinguishable from an antibody to say my divisna or Yoni's disease or border disease. We are able to use that antibody test in springborn calves and lambs to see whether those animals have been exposed to liver fluke. We use them as what's called sentinels. Normally it's a representative group of lambs or calves. Again, for specifics, go and talk to your vet. Antibodies can be detected from around about two weeks post-infection. That gives you potentially 10 weeks head start on the traditional tests. In the case of a positive result, you may be satisfied that you do need to use a flucicide that year. In the case of a negative result, that may give you more evidence that you don't need to at that particular time. XL Vets, which is a community of independent practices, gathered a lot of data from around about 30 farms in 2019 from across the UK between Orkney and Devon. Each practice visited the same farm monthly between July and December. They blood sampled six lambs until the group went positive. Some went positive in July. Many, in fact most, never went positive, which is really surprising. Again, it all comes down to context. No farm will be the same and no year will be the same. 2019 was fairly exceptional in that spring and summer were very dry. The take home message really from the XL Vets Fluke Sentinel program was that it was very difficult to predict on a farm basis, on a regional basis, on a national basis, what the liver fluke challenge was going to be on a given farm in a given year. There were farms relatively nearby to each other that had months difference in when they went positive. In my mind, that underlines the usefulness of the test. So when might you test? Generally, it's going to be in the autumn. I know I sound like a broken record. As always, talk to your vet about the specifics. Many sheep producers may do it pre-tupping. Many suckler beef producers may do it shortly after housing to determine the need for a post-housing fluke treatment. Remember, your vet will have a far better understanding of the likely fluke challenge on your farm than I will. For the calves, it may well dovetail nicely with a BVD check test, for example. It's always helpful to try and combine jobs where you can. To finish, a few caveats. First, antibodies indicate exposure to infection. There's generally not a reliable way to say when that infection occurred. In lambs and calves in their first grazing season, by definition, it can only have happened that year because they weren't alive before that. In older animals, it's much less clear whether that exposure occurred this year, the year before, the year before that. You can't tell. That's why we need to sample lambs and calves from that year. Secondly, if say animals have been weaned and moved on to a different pasture with a different liver fluke challenge profile before testing, that potentially may give you slightly misleading results for different classes of stock. Again, liver fluke is very specific even within individual fields on a farm. Generally, this is more common for sheep than it is for cattle. Springborn calves tend to stick with their mothers until they're housed, often they're housed at or after weaning. So they've only been grazing the same areas of the farm as their mothers, the cows, at testing. Finally, fluke antibodies can pass from mother to calf or lamb through the colostrum. These antibodies can persist for three months. So if you go in and test lambs or calves that are three months or younger, you may get some false positives because you're simply detecting the antibodies from the mothers. As I mentioned at the start, liver fluke really is a complex topic with a shifting knowledge base and many, many factors at play. For that reason, your primary source of information should be your local vet. The liver fluke antibody test is really useful, but it is just one piece of the puzzle. If it sounds like it might be of use to you in your flock or herd, pick up the phone, talk to them. Otherwise, like the video, leave me a comment, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and I hope to see you for the next video. Over and out.